this is Mr. Padawan, and this is part one of uh, the PLO 101 series I'm going to be doing on Grinder School. Today we're going to go over some, uh, some basic topics here, and that's just going to be uh, starting hands, position, and opponent types. And these are some key things that I think uh, you should get locked down and understand really before you even get on the, the table. Um, this is going to help you make less mistakes and stay out of sticky uh, situations. Okay, so for starting hands here, and this is talking about six max, and you can translate it to full ring by just, you know, for under the gun, you're going to do the first like three seats. Under the gun plus one in middle positions are going to end up being, you know, the next couple seats, and so on and so forth uh, as we progress. Um, so for under the gun, we want to stay with the big pairs and big double suited route rundowns. So that's going to be, you know, ace ace xx, king king xx, you know, the example shown, 9 10 jack queen, you know, king queen 10 ace, you know, you have a gap, uh, but you still have very high card potential. And you, you want to play with suits a, as much as you can. Um, under the gun, you can even throw in some, something like, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, if you're double su suited, I, I don't see why you can't can't throw that in there. Um, but kind of staying with these guidelines is going to help you stay out of trouble. Now, Ace, Ace, XX, and King, King, XX, that's going to be something where you might want to mix in some limping depending on how weak or how strong your aces are and also depending on the dynamics of the the table uh, but just as a general you can go ahead and raise, raise them up and you know see see what happens under the gun plus one and middle position you're going to include everything that you have for under the gun but now you're going to add suited aces with a run so that's like you know uh, ace, six, seven, eight, uh, and hands like ace, four, five, six, ace, you know, three, five, six, in any kind of hand where you're fairly connected with the suited ace, okay, those are going to be pretty, pretty nice for you. Uh, you're going to have the nut flush potential, and that will get you paid off a lot, a lot, because people just can't fold flushes, they just have a hard time with it, um, especially at the micros. So try not to bluff with just the, the naked ace bluff. Uh, that's a mistake at the micros, so try not to do it. And uh, you're going to want to be raising any kind of middle runs, suited or not. So four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, you know, that that's a run. So in any four connected cards, are good, you know, if there's a gap in there, like uh, four, six, seven, eight, that that's fine as well. You want to try and keep the gaps towards the bottom and not at the top, because when you have a gap at the top, say in a hand like five, six, seven, nine, boards are going to come out and you're going to have a draw like a straight draw, and you're not going to be drawing to the nuts necessarily. So it's it's real important to to keep, keep that gap at the bottom. Um, and you can start throwing in you know mid, middle pairs, sevens and plus, um, like seven seven eight nine is fine. You know, go ahead and raise that up, especially if you have a suit. Um, any kind of you know double paired hands, seven seven nine nine. You know. Eights and tens, eights and nines, you know, those kind of hands, that that's fine. But you want to be very cautious, um, especially if you get into a pot multi-way where you flop bottom set or middle set. You know, you want to try and and you want to get value for, for your set, especially if you notice certain players are stacking off with two pair. Uh, but you don't want to get set over set. That is one of the worst things in PLO is when they have top set and you have middle or bottom set and you're drawing pretty much dead. So for uh, the cutoff in the bottom, I mean the button, excuse me, um, any two good hold of hands if it's fold, folded to you 
are fine to raise with. Uh, I think if you are getting a lot of limp calls, I don't think you need to start, you know, trying to isolate. Um, if this isn't like Hold'em, where you're going to be trying to isolate because you've been taken down with the CC bet a lot, you're going to be seeing flops multi-way. So it's better, you know, you can just limp behind with, with these kind of hands that you would normally raise if folded to. But, you know, you're going to want to play position, so you can go ahead and just see the flop, see what everybody else does, and, and move on. Now, of course, if you have any of the hands, you know, when you're out and you're cut off in the button, that you would be bringing in under the gun, you should be isolating with those hands. Um, you know, any suited ace, any pairs, any run downs, you know, semi connected, double suited, or single suited hands, all going to be a raise of full fold to two. And just the premium ones that we talked about before, the, you know, very connected, double suited type hands, the high card potential hands, queen jack ace 10, you know, any of those kind of hands with the suit, you are definitely isolating with in the cutoff in the button. And in the blinds, we're just going to play really, really tight. We'll get into position uh, next, and we will see, you know, you'll see why in the blinds we're playing so tight. Premium rundowns, big broadways, small pairs uh, are junk. So do not be calling, do not be calling out of position with small pairs. Okay. Let's go over, you know, position here. Why do you want to play in position? For, you know, limit holding players, you know that when you play in position, decisions are easier, you can pot control, you can get more value for your hands, everything is just easier. Well, in PLO, this is a drawing game. This is a game of straights and flushes. I don't know if you guys have heard that before. Um, and it's so important to be able to play in position because you can control how much you or your opponents have to pay to draw. Okay? So when you're on a draw, you can decide to take a free card. You know, when you think that they're on a draw and you have a big hand or you have just two pair, even just a pair, you know, you can make them pay. Um, you can manipulate your opponents when you are in position. Okay, you have all the control. Now, because um, you get to see your opponent's actions prior to making yours, so you get to control exactly what your part is in that pot. And you can make easy laydowns, you can even make tough laydowns, you can just, everything you do is going to actually be really, really simple. Okay, I really can't stress how much easier your play in Omaha is and how much more important it is when you're playing in position. Okay, so we have, have a little exercise here. Now we have Queen of Spades, King of Hearts, Seven of Clubs, Nine of Hearts. Okay, and we're on the button. And we're going to be playing 50 PLO in this exercise. And as you can see, this is a pr pretty good hand, you know, semi-connected, you know, the nine queen king. Uh, we have a suit to a high card, the king, so that's pretty good, and we're on the button. So we get to make all our decisions easier. And in this uh, example, we're playing 50 PLO, and we are going to, for simplicity's sake, just everyone's pretty much got 100 BBs. Uh, and our opponent raises in the cutoff to a dollar fifty, and we call in position, and the big blind calls. Okay, four seventy-five in the pot, and the flop comes four king three with two spades. Now the big blind checks. Well, he shouldn't even really be playing, you know, out of position, but I guess he liked his hand, or he's a donkey. And the cutoff uh, goes ahead and continuation bets. Now, we could fold or we could call here. Now, our our hand is not that great. Our hand, 
all we got is top, top pair, and we have outs to two pairs. But of course, you know, if a nine or seven comes and it's a spade, we're kind of, you know, kind of scary. But, you know, we do have positions, so we can make a move at the pot. Um, now we go ahead and call, and the big blind folds. Turn brings the ten of spades. And that completes the flush draw, and our opponent checks. Okay. This is great about position. Now, he's checking. Now, we are going to take a stab at this pot. And with pot at 1275, we can easily use position and just stab out $9. And if we get called, we can check behind the river, or if he leads out to us, we can fold our hand. And we're going to do this with our flushes. We're going to do this with our sets. We're going to do this with our air. I mean, we're constantly going to do this and constantly keep pressure on people in position because they're never going to know and they're going to have to make a mistake eventually. Eventually, they're going to end up bluff raising or they're just going to keep folding. And, and that's also a mistake. They're not going to adjust. So we'll be taking down pots all the time. Now, in that example, if the big blind would have called two and the spade came out, we probably wouldn't have, you know, tried to bluff at that pot three-handed. It's just too likely some somebody has maybe, maybe not the nut spades, but some spades, you know, in their hands. So we would just, you know, check, check behind and try to get to a showdown. Now, in our second example, we have ace, ace, jack, jack, single suited, double pair, big pair hands, under the gun and we're fist pumping. We love our hand. So we go ahead and we, we pop it up and everybody calls. I mean, it's just the worst situation in the world. Everyone calls and now our fist pump turns to uh, hating our lives. Now the flop comes out with a six five, two clubs, and we still, I mean, we flop top set. There's no straight out there. There's just draws. And we're loving our hand. Okay? So it looks real, real good for us. And... But we're, we're out of position. And here comes the problem. We want to protect our hand. So we're betting out pot. And both the cutoff and the button call. So two people that have position on us, they both call. Everybody else folds. And now... The pot is really inflated, you know, $26, and we got, you know, like basically a pot size and a half left to bet. And the turn brings the eight of hearts, making the board a six of clubs, five of hearts, eight of hearts, okay? With two callers here, you know, the, 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 this board, you know, completes a straight draw, and it brought another fluff plus draw. And against two opponents, this is where the problem comes, okay? We have no redraws in our hand. Now, the redraw is going to be, say, if we had clubs instead of the suited to the ace of spades, you know, then we could have maybe, even if it was the, the jack high club redraw or a heart redraw, then we don't mind getting our money in with top set and a redraw. But, you know, because even if it's a straight, that's okay, we have a lot of outs. But now at this point, if we pot out, we're only going to get called by something better, you know, more than likely the straight, and it's going to be very difficult for us. So, this is where one of those situations where you find yourself in and you're like, oh, I wish I was in position right now. If we were on the button, we would have a much easier decision. And, you know, your life would well, just be easier. Sorry, brain fart there. Excuse me. Um, but, yeah, you, you could check behind. You know, granted, that allows the flow of flush draws to possibly get there. But you're probably beat if you, you bet out. So you probably just check, check, check behind when the 8 hits and take, to take a freed card, hoping to boat up and let it be. Now, um, I'd like to point out that on that flop against a wrap with a flush draw, like uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 
with uh, clubs and hearts. I know that's like the best possible hand they could, they could have. But even with, without the hearts on the flop, uh, we were a slight dog, having only 45% equity. So even with top set against a wrap and a flush draw, we're behind. Now that's the epitome of PLO. That's what we love. We like when we can get the money in against top set and we're ahead. So that's, uh, that's about enough on position, I think. Let's go over uh, the opponent types that you guys are going to be seeing. There's going to be your loose passive pre, which uh, if you're just learning PLO and have dabbed a little bit, you probably are going to re recognize this opponent because this is probably you. Okay? This is the type of opponent you will run into most as you're grinding through the micros. This type of opponent will limp call from any position with his good hands and his weak hands. This makes it hard to put him on a hand range. Now, I mean, your opponent is limping with his good and weak hands because he doesn't really know what hands are good and what hands are bad and what, what position. You know, and he's probably tried ray raising with good hands only to get sucked out on because he couldn't play post flop. And uh, this makes it, you know, difficult to put him on the hand range. But when this type of player starts betting, this is when you can narrow his range down. He isn't raising a draw, so bottom set's never good against his opponent. This type of opponent will probably even just call to two pair, um, especially if it's like mid, mid middle two pair. Uh, he's going to be easier to bluff, but he will also call draws all the way down. I mean, if you're firing with top set and he has a flush draw, you're just going to keep firing, and if the draw hits, beware, he probably hit it. And if you check to him, and he bets, he definitely had it, because this is the kind of player that is not going to bluff at the river. If they miss, say there's a flush draw, and the straight draw hit, and the, the, this opponent checks behind, and the flush draw still misses on the river, and you check, check to him, he won't bluff. Even though you've checked twice, this type of player will just check behind. Okay? Then you're going to have your loose aggressive player. This type of opponent, he's like a train. Okay? He's going to run over you. If you let him. They don't mind playing big pots because they're going to use their aggression to take those big pots down. They're going to make position plays on you. They're going to three bet you light in position. These kind of opponents, this is the kind of opponent you want to be like, okay? Try to always have position on this type of opponent, because they're going to make your life hell. If you find yourself out of position against one of these guys, then I suggest you leave. Until you can learn to play post-flop really, really well, and until you learn to be able to make light call-downs, you cannot profitably play against this kind kind of opponent. The other way is if they're more of like loose, loose aggressive, kind of on the side of ma maniac, then you can let them hang, hang themselves, and they will. Um, but that won't work too often, and that may work once, but they'll adjust. And the last is the maniac fish. This is your money tree. And if anyone sees me at the lower limits, uh, you probably, you know, if it's like a Friday night or something and it's really late, I'm possibly drunk and docking off money and that would be me, the maniac fish. Okay. <laughs> Unlike the other two types of opponents that are more difficult to extract value out of, these opponents will raise with any four cards and they'll call with any four and tend to stack off with any two pair and almost <laughs> will call with weak flush draws. You know, value, value, value. That That's really all I can say is when you find someone like this, do not leave the table. I don't care how lucky they are getting. Okay, they may get super lucky. They may get it all in pre with like seven, three, nine, you know, jack. And just own you. You know, take, take, take your ace, ace, king, king, double suited and just shove it down your throat. And you're like, how does this guy win? Just be patient. Stay at the table. You're going to stack them. You're going to get their money. 
and you're going to be very, very happy you listen to me instead. So that's it, guys. Uh, I know the video is kind of short. just want to get some out to you. Uh, I've been really, really, really busy with work and my family, so I know you guys have been waiting for this. Um, in the next one, I'm going to be talking more about three betting and post flop play, um, how to play certain draws, you know, the most profitable way, way to play them, and then we'll we'll see after that. Uh, I'll probably be doing a video, uh, just like a sweat set session video, prior to making the next PLO 101. So look look for that. And I appreciate your guys' support and your comments. And this is Mr. Padawan for GrindersCore.com. Hello everybody, this is Mr. Padawan. I'm recording this session uh, of 5 PLO 6 Max, just to kind of uh, go over all the notes and the lecture we just had uh, for PLO 101, Part 1. So, I wanted to start before I even started playing hand, so that way we could kind of look and see what we could get from our opponents. Well, not a whole lot. Um, okay, this right here is a hand, obviously, you know, I mean, we don't know what he's going to do on table one, uh, team as, so we're going to obviously fold to this, uh, to poker, haunt us as three bet. We have a, you know, okay hand to call a three bet with if we were, say, the original razor on the button, but not, not to play out of position, uh, and without knowing that if this person is going to re-raise. Now, I don't really want, this is a, a good hand. Um, I want to raise for value here, but I really don't want to play it out of position too much. We do have some high, high card value, so I'm just going to check it. Uh, play a little more conservative. Uh, we don't really hit that great good of a flop, so we're probably just going to check fold. Um, I think at the lower limits, it's going to be much easier to just play a lot more straightforward. And play position, stay out of sticky spots. Um, all the stuff that we went over in the lecture, uh, you know, I'm going to fold that hand, fold that, and we're going to fold this. We have a suited ace. You could limp this in, uh, but remember, we are going to be playing out of position, and we're not going to hit the flop all that great, you know, with three spades in our hand. So really, we're focusing on you know position and staying out of all the spots that will make our life difficult. Uh, everything that we previously discussed. Um, we have aces here with a high card king, and it's suited to to the king. So we're going to put it in the raise. We are going to have position, and uh, that's good. Oh, you know what? I don't even have my HUD up. So, eh, you know, we don't really need it. Okay. This video is going to be, as far as playtime, it's going to be pretty short because it's just going to be, you know, on the end of the other video. Uh, probably about 20 minutes of playtime. On table four, you see uh, we have a, a pretty good hand here to be playing on the button. Um, Five, six, seven, nine. The gap's at the top, so I really don't feel like putting in a raise is going to be for much value. We're going to see this flop multi-way often, uh, so raising is not going to really knock anybody out. Maybe the small blind, and honestly, I mean, we really don't care. Let, we can let, let let him in. Now on table three, I limp. We we end up getting position, 
And if nobody bets, I'm obviously just going to bet, bet this out. We're going to bet it out 10 cents. And we'll probably just take, take that hand down. Uh, we're going to fold here. Now we, we do get two pair. Um, this guy probably has some sort of like jack three or you know some sort of hand like that. So we're, we're ahead of him. But at the same time, we don't want to continue the building a pot. Uh, you know, with such a marginal holding. So we're just going to check, see the river. The river's not on a card he should be bet betting very often, unless he has hearts. So we'll see him check very often, and then we'll just check behind, and I, I think our hand's probably good here uh, often enough, um, but I, I don't think it's where we're going to get that value from anything by betting. So. And we are good. And let, let's go ahead and pull up his hand and see what he had. And okay, so he had a gutter and just figured he'd peel one. So like, 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 I, like I thought, our hand was good, but there wasn't much we were going to get value from. So it's better just to just to go ahead and, uh, and check, check behind. Um, on this hand, over here on table one, queen suited, six deuce, it's just you know, we're only going to want to see a queen, really, so it's not really worth a raise. Um, you know, we have an open under here. And if we hit it, we are going to be uh, going to the best. So we have position. So I'm going to go ahead and call and see what lines do. Okay. Two doesn't really change anything. So. We're just going to let, let our hand go to another barrel. If we would have turned a club, um, I, I would have thought about calling again. But, you know, we're just not going to chase with, with just the naked open under, even in position. He probably has two pair or a set, so, something of that nature. And we really don't want to get involved. Uh, suited to the king, sends on my connected hand. I'm going to raise that on the button since we're only four handed. If we get called, it's not, not that big of a deal. Uh, this isn't that great of a flop. It hits their raise. They're going to have a pair or some sort of draw. Uh, I think enough of a time, even just like 9 10, is going to call us. So. I, I think a check check behind in the two players is going to be you know, the optimal play here. Now that we hit two pair, um, our, our two pair is not that great. Definitely not worth that bet. So even though we might be good, he might, he might just be on a draw. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in any hand like Queen XXX, you know, with overs to R6 and 3 is going to have some outs to, you know, to, to beat us. And Jack, same, same thing with Jack XXX. And then, of course, you know, any kind of straight or fluff with a shot, we're also behind. Or, well, very, well, not really behind, but very, very close to uh, even with. So I've been uh, I haven't been around that much. Uh, I hope to get some more uh, videos done, but I just uh, I don't know if I told you guys in the last video, but I just passed that big, big test I've been studying for, and so I've been working uh, a little bit more uh, full full time with my normal job. So that hasn't given much time to poker. But uh, I, I do try to check the forums uh, about every night to see if anyone's posted any PLO hands, uh, just so that way I can I can look at them and review. And I do check check my email daily. So if anyone wants to get a hold of me, go ahead. Um, on table two, I limp behind with uh, this hand because I'm suited and I have some Broadways and I have some high card potential. So and I have the button. And really, I think that just with that combination, having the button, it 
makes it uh, profitable to go ahead and call it a hand like this. Now this hand, I think we're going to get a lot of calls, and I want to get some value out of hands like, like, like draw hands. So I'm definitely going to bet, and I'm going to bet pretty big here. I'm going to bet 18 cents. Um, I want them to call and with their draws. So and I, I think we, we do get those calls a lot. And then uh, and then I think on the, the turn, if they don't hit, well, that, that's not a really good card. <laughs> so on the turn, if that card didn't come off, then uh, I would have went for another barrel. Uh, but that, that's a pretty bad card for our hand. So we're going to go ahead and check for, for pot control. And, uh, and pretty much, I mean, if he pot butts into us on the, on the river, we're going to have to give up on the hand. That's a great card for us because I don't see him barreling without a flush and so his straight he's going to get a little scared of so we'll check check behind take take our value and see if uh, see if we're still good and uh, we're not we save ourselves some money okay with the queen block blocker in here okay I went ahead and continuation bet uh, but when he goes as he raises, we're just done with the hand. <coughs> so we'll let the hand go. I don't expect him to raise there without the hand that, that beats us. And I mean, he, even if he's raising to to pair there, we're we're drawing pretty dead. I mean, if he has ace king, drawing the queens and tens, so. So the whole key um, I hope you got from the lecture was you really want to play better hands than your opponents so that way when you get into hands, your hand dominates theirs. Even when you flop the nuts, I was going to pull up some hand histories when I flopped the nuts and what was against, you know, like I flopped the nuts straight for somebody with the open ender uh, and, um, and to, to the higher straight and a flush draw. So, you know, he had about 42% on me or something. So, that that those are those racist situations where your your edge is you know small, but definitely there. This is a great flop for us with with our hand. Um, I don't expect him to have much, so I'm going to go ahead and bet small and try and get some sort of call. Um, Kings double suited, even in the blinds, I'm going to raise. And he calls, and so we're going to bet again. And again, I don't expect him to have much here, so I, I want value. So I'm just going to bet. And now he raises. <coughs> um, I I think we, we should be folding to the raise, but since I've underrepped my hand so much, uh, I am going to call this off. So we'll just get it in here. And yeah, he does have me, and that, that's really unfortunate. Um, but as goes the game. So, yeah, I mean, he calls with a trashy hand and he gets lucky, but I, I just can't really see folding that right there. If I had more history with the guy, then I guess. Here we go again. He calls. Let's check if I have the pot control. 
That's a really bad card. Now he bets out. I mean, it's obviously going to be a fold here. This guy got to the river. That was pretty insane. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Um, I guess I probably could have folded to, to that check raise on, on the turn, on that hit after all. Uh, these players aren't bloodbuffing often, if at all. I mean, obviously, we just saw. Baba River just go nuts over here with this hand. Calls with a very weak hand in position. And just goes nuts. Just keeps calling. I don't even know what's going on. Okay, well, fish. Up here, I mean, we, we don't have much, but we we can check too. So, and then there's a mid race. Um, a mid race and then a call. So we know we're we're not drawing very well. <laughs> that might not not have even been a good card for us, so we'll see. We'll see what ends up turning up here. I mean, I would expect El Sam to have some sort of maybe weak two pair, maybe even a set. Uh, and Scotty probably has some sort of draw, flush draw, open ender, or something like that. Okay. We have a pair, so another nine I think is a good card for us. Uh, obviously a club I think is good for us, and a king is going to be good for us too. We could pot control, but I kind of just want to get the money in now. He's short enough that I don't really care, so... And uh, yeah, we're we're nah, we're okay. So ended up the club was not not the best hand for us, but that's okay because we end up winning because our hand was better. <coughs> I think though, I really think if he's gonna call that raise with only you know whatever sixty cents left behind, he should just get the hand in. King, King, Jack, 10, Broadways. I'm not suited. This is a hand that, I, honestly, under the gun, I think I think you should fold. But for for the sake of the video, I'm going to raise it up here and see if we can get ourselves into a sticky spot and why playing out of position sucks. Um, but everybody folds. And the video is coming to a conclusion pretty soon. So, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I've been sick as well, so. Been pretty much work all day. Come home, sleep, you know, check check forums and whatnot, and then go to sleep. But yeah, I, I have noticed a decline in postings for PLL. Uh, 
I had some ideas to spark some interest, uh, but uh, we're still we're working on those. And uh, you know, I, I also would like to ask you guys, you know, the PLO 101 series. Let me know what you guys think of the first part and um, see, you know, kind of if you can give me some, you know, helpful pointers on what you think I can improve on and you know where. If you think I can explain things better, what you'd like to see, may, maybe if while I'm going through the slides, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, if I pull up hands that maybe will back up what I'm trying to teach or give some of better examples. I thought I'd try, try to give some good examples in there, but maybe you disagree. Um, with the way these people have been calling, I don't really think stealing is going to be good, but I'm going to limp on the button. And I don't think limping on the button is bad in these kind of games where people aren't super aggressive. And you can just play position. I'm going to go ahead and auto check off here. This button's off. And we're going to end the video after this orbit. <coughs> so I bet's out 15. Bet's out pot. Now. We're gonna we're just gonna go with a little position play here. I'm gonna go ahead and call. And that's actually a card that I kind of wanted to see because this is just a um, because now I'm gonna go ahead and bet. I'm gonna bet out pretty strong here. And he calls. Ah, oh, okay. The king pairing was not. The best card for us because obviously he probably had something like two pair or something and yeah <coughs> and he bets out now we're folding for sure but if that king would have came off and it would have been like a five uh well obviously a five wasn't good for us but if it would have been like a, a nine you know or, or a three um then we would have been able to take that pot away but he called with his two pair, his set or whatever, and you know, he rivered us. He rivered what we were representing. And somebody's upset because uh, they lost a hand. Oh, there we go. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> That's PLO. He's upset because this guy had two pair, you know, on the turn. He he got two pair on the turn. Somehow they got the money in, and that's just funny to me. I love to get upset in, in, at the table. I think it's funny because I, I like to see people's reaction when, it, when I start going ape nuts. So... When, whenever I'm drunk and playing, you'll see me talking a lot of stuff crap. It's funny. Look at this guy. Do you hear me, Frog? That's so funny. Okay, anyways. This is Padawan from Grinder School. Oh, never mind. Hold on. We got a hand. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the first part of PLO 101 and enjoyed this little video going over uh, everything. Okay, in this hand... This is very draw heavy. Um, I don't think we're going to get anyone to fold with one bet. And we can't withstand a raise or even, we can't even double barrel any cards on the turn. I mean, even if we hit a king, it'll probably be a diamond. You know, it's 50 50 shot at a diamond, you know, so can't really do much. So that that's just a board that you're just going to want to go ahead and check and fold. And being in position, you see this guy is able to just pot it out. And we just have to fold so often. I mean, if we wanted to try and get frisky we we could call here and then any non-diamond just go go to town on but it's just not worth it it's that this is a play that maybe you would make at a higher limit but not here <coughs> okay then we'll play one more hand since it's a pretty run run down hand eight nine ten jack we're suited ones our suits are kind of irrelevant but it is going to make a lot of hands so Alright guys, this is Mr. Padawan for GrinderSchool.com. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and part one. Give me some feedback. Let me know uh, 
if you guys liked it, if you guys want me to continue on the series or not. Um, and uh, that is it. Thanks a lot, guys.